around two years ago, Yamaha launched a very good looking bike in the form of the XSR 155. Now that was a retro naked bike based on the R15 and it even got a lot of attention right here in India. In fact, fans were adamant that the bike should be launched right here in India as well. And Yamaha, well, instead of launching that bike, what they've brought here is this one, the FZX. You're watching the AutoX YouTube channel. You can also get your daily dose of all things automotive on our website, autox.com, and follow us on social media. Don't forget to check out our monthly magazine and make sure to hit the bell and subscribe button so you don't miss a thing. Now, the FZX is actually based on the FZ series model from Yamaha, and that's a very successful motorcycle. And that's obviously a very uh, important reason why Yamaha decided to bring this bike on that platform. And that is, of course, keeping costs down. To make this bike affordable, they completely redesigned the FZ and made it look like a scrambler. Now, you might say it doesn't look that great in person, and I'll have to agree with you. When I saw the bike, I didn't think it looked attractive whatsoever, but it certainly is unique. So let's start with the front section of the bike. What I like definitely is the new round retro uh, headlight. It's a very nice design and it's got LEDs as well. Now you've also got a very nice new digital instrument cluster and it displays all the information except for the gear indicator. You've also got these new high handlebar positions and of course the suspension at the front gets uh, the fork uh, protection. The centerpiece has to be the new fuel tank. It looks big and muscular, but actually it's smaller than the FZ. This one is 10 liters only, but it looks a little bit bigger thanks to that black plastic cladding it's got on top of it with those bolts and it looks very uh, butch and retro. Then you've got this new seat. It's a much wider seat and it is very comfortable, but I have to say and to make it look like a, a more scrambler-esque kind of a design, I think a flat seat would have actually done a lot of justice to this bike. You've also got this very utilitarian, kind of a grab rail in the back. And then of course you get an LED taillight. But I have to say, if you look at some of the components, there's a lot of plastic on this bike for a scrambler, first of all. It's also got these radiator shrouds and there's no radiator on this bike. So it's just a simple aesthetic purpose, but the quality is not the best. It's kind of flimsy here. Even the center panel here is very flimsy. So it's really not the best quality in terms of what a Yamaha can offer. Uh, you've also got this blacked out exhaust here. So overall, the bike looks completely different from the FZ and it does look unique, but to say if it's good or bad, I leave that up to you. Now, coming to the engine, it's of course the same engine from the FZ and that is the 150cc single cylinder air-cooled engine. And you know, this engine actually, it's the least performing engine in the entire segment. It's got the lowest power as well. It's got about just over 12 brake horsepower and 13.3 or 13.4 nm of torque so it's not the best power output in terms of what you have on offer in this segment um it certainly is a very smooth engine it's a tried and tested engine of course but i have to say the fz over the years the performance has kind of gone down a little bit i've had the 2010 fzs model and i really love that machine it was fantastic to ride this one really feels like it's struggling to get moving initial acceleration is okay uh, the mid-range is also great for city riding but there's nothing at the top end whatsoever and once you're over 7,000 RPM, it's basically, it has nothing to give you. You have to twist the throttle all the way down if you want to make quick overtaking maneuvers. And you'll also have to downshift on most of the time as well. So you really don't have that fantastic performance that you would find. Uh, but still though, as I said, it's a very nice engine. It's smooth, it's, uh, the power delivery is linear. But then this bike has been designed to be a comfortable machine. And when you get on it, the ergonomics are set up very nice for that. Thanks to the high handlebars and the nice wide seat. Even the foot pegs are placed directly under your knees so you're in a very nice upright position and you can ride through traffic and feel uh, comfortable at all times. The front end also feels very light, so it's easy to maneuver. It definitely isn't the most agile though in terms of overall handling, so you can't really attack corners you know, very aggressively. It's more of a laid back rider, but you certainly can maneuver through traffic. And I also want to point out the fact that even though Yamaha is trying to market this bike as a go-anywhere kind of a adventure motorcycle, there's no top-end power at all. There's no, uh, you know, really amazing top speed. Once you cross 90 kilometers per hour, the engine really does feel strained and you're literally twisting down the throttle all the way. So it's not something that you want to use as an adventure tourer. Uh, the suspension also, I have to say, is certainly a little bit stiff for my liking. And considering the fact that this is supposed to be an X model or a scrambler 
or uh, you know some do a little bit of off-roading the suspension is not tuned for that whatsoever that's also a big disappointment the other thing also is that the, the fuel tank is so wide that you can't really stand up on the bike at all because your knees are far too spread out so there's no comfortable position for you to stand up when you're riding on some trails so this bike really is more of um, a city bike in fact the fz is just as capable of this when it's off-road you've also got this nice solid uh, sump guard or bash plate honestly i don't see any point to that whatsoever because this bike really should not be looked as as an off-road machine at all the only thing that will probably help you when you're riding off-road is the dual purpose tires it gets from mrf and even that it will only offer slightly better grip uh, on tarmac it does offer great grip when it's in dry conditions but if you push this bike a little too hard the tires don't do that much justice to the bike if you do want to get a much better proper off-road motorcycle you can always go for the hero expos which is a fantastic bike So again, let's come to the price now. Um, this machine uh, offers you phone connectivity and that's about it in terms of features. It's got single channel ABS, which is pretty good in this segment, of course. But then again, this bike is priced at rupees 1.2 lakh X showroom. And that's pretty expensive. If you look at the competition, there's so many bikes out there that have better performance and are just as comfortable to ride. In fact, I had the Apache 160 just a few months ago when I did a very long road trip on that and had a great time with it. This bike is being marketed as an adventure motorcycle. I don't know why I mean, I was doing that. And I really don't think that if you're looking for something in this segment, that you would want this performance. But if you like the way this bike looks, more power to you, um, go ahead and get a test ride of it. But if you really are looking for a little better performance and some better features as well, I'll have to say that you'll have a lot of other options in the market right now.